Let's move on to item number 31. This group refers to the number of symmetries of a regular polygon. Is it alternating, permutation, dihedral, or abelian group? What's your answer? For this problem, it is actually letter. We'll see. When we speak about alternating group, it is a group of even permutations. Permutation group is its elements are permutations under mapping compos composition of permutations. For letter C, it's in fact the correct answer. It refers to the number of symmetries of a regular polygon. Um, this group is called the dihedral group. And letter D, a billion group, it's in fact a commutative group. That is, for example, A star B equals B star A. That property is being satisfied. Letter C is the correct answer. 32. How many symmetries does a regular hexagon have? Is it 8, 10, 12, or 14? What's your guess or what do you think? For this one, it is important to note in our abstract algebra, a regular polygon with n sides have or has two n symmetries. So it's simply two times the number of sides. Why? Because n of them are from rotations and n of them are from flips or by flipping. With that, since a regular hexagon has six sides, Thus, a regular hexagon has 2 times 6 or 12 symmetries in all. Letter C. Number 33. For a function to be bijective, what qualifications should it possess? It should be injective only. It should be surjective only. It should be injective and surjective, or it should be commutative and homomorphic. If you answered A, I'm sorry, it's not. In fact, in fact, it should be letter C. It should. Uh, when we speak about injective, injective is the other term for one to one. Surjective is the other term for onto. A bijective function is both injective and surjective, or it's both one-to-one, -one, onto, and onto function. So letter C should be a requirement. Okay, so far, I hope we're doing good with abstract algebra. 34. This refers to all of the possible arrangements of, of a finite set of n objects. Did you go for combination, permutation, transcription, or mapping composition? So if we have possible arrangements, so order matters. Combination, in combination, order does not matter. But in permutation, it does matter. In fact, when we speak about mapping composition, Operation, it's in fact an operation that could be used for permutations, especially if you have your permutation groups. Letter B is the correct answer. 35. Consider the permutations below. What is AB? So um, you might be wondering how come it looks like this. So uh, this is how we write in two-row form permutations. Okay, so I have here one, two, three on top and three, two, one at the bottom for A. This means one is mapped to three, two is mapped to two, and three is mapped to one. For permutation for B, one is mapped to one, two is mapped to three, and three is mapped to two. So if we take AB, the product of AB, or the mapping composition AB, all we have to do is work from left. I mean, work from right to left. 
So the domain here, we start with one. One is mapped to one. Then we go to the, this one here will become the domain in A. And you see that one is mapped to three, right? So one to one, one to three. So in all, one is mapped to three. For B, two is mapped to three in B, but in A, three is mapped to one. That's why we will write here one. And lastly, in B, three is mapped to two, but in A, two is mapped to itself. Hence, AB is this permutation, which is letter C. All right. I hope you're having a great time so far. 36. With C equals this permutation, what do you think is C cube? Or this means C, C, C. Or C composition, composition C, composition C. C of C of C. Did you go for A, B, C or D. To do this, we will be doing the mapping composition uh, three times to itself, with itself. So from here, for example, take a look. One is mapped to two. So this two will become this one. Two is mapped to one. Then this one will become domain again. One to two. So again, you do it three times because of the exponent three. 1 to 2, that's once. 2 to 1, that's the second. 1 to 2, you have 2. Let's have the 2 next. Let's do it three times. The first mapping is 2 is mapped to 1. The second, 1 is mapped to 2. The third is 2 is mapped to 1. That's why you have there 1. And for the third one, 3 is mapped to 3, 3 is mapped to 3, 3 is mapped to 3. So... It's still itself or 213 letter D. Thirty seven with Z three, uh, which is the set of all remainders when you divide a number uh, by three, when you divide a, for example, an integer by three, your remainders are zero, one and two. OK. What is the identity element in Z3 under operation addition modulo 3? If you see this, this means addition modulo 3. When we say addition modulo 3, like you will get the remainder upon division by 3. So when we speak about identity element, whatever element operated to it will still be the element itself. So if you could see, if you add zero of with zero under modulo three, you have zero. If you add zero plus one, that's one. If you divide one by three, it's still one. So it's still. If you add zero by with two, so that's two. If you divide two by three, the remainder is still two. So you see, if any operated any term or any element operated with zero, it's still itself. This means to say that zero is the identity element, letter A. All right, so far, so good. Number 38. The same still is given, but this time, what is inverse of 2 in this group? Is it 0, 1, 2, or 3? Take note that there are only three elements that are z those are the elements are 0, 1, and 2. So I'm sure D is out of the picture here. And here, what should be added to 2 to produce the identity element 0? This is the concept, in fact, the abstract concept of the, of the inverse is 
what element should be operated with it so that you will arrive to the identity element. So if you could see from the diagram, or I mean from this one, if you add two by one, two plus one, that's three, right? But it's not your final answer because you still have to divide it with your modulo, which is three. So two plus one is three. Three divided by three, what's the remainder? The remainder is zero. Hence, two plus one under addition modulo three is zero because if you add them and divide by three, the remainder is zero. Modulo is all about remainders. Hence, the inverse of two in the group Z3 plus uh, addition modulo three is the element one, letter B. 39. Which of the following is a generator of Z6 under addition modulo six? When we say generator, if you operate that same number to itself as many times as you wish, for this case, under addition modulo 6, it should generate all the elements of Z6. Is it 5, 4, 3, or 2? From here, you could actually see that if you have 5, so, okay, 5. 5 plus 5, 10. But if you divide 10 by 6, the remainder is 4. Next, we have 4. 4 plus 5. That gives you 9. But if you divide 9 by 6, the remainder is 3. That's why you have here the 3. 3 plus 5. That's 8, right? That's 8. But 8 divided by 5, uh, I mean... Uh, sorry, 5 plus 5, 10. 10 divided by 6 leaves a remainder of 4. 4 plus 5, that's 9. 9 divided by 6 leaves a remainder of 3. 3 plus 5 gives you 8. 8 divided by 6 leaves a remainder of 2. That's why you have here 2. 2 plus 5, that's 7. Divided by 6 gives a remainder of 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. But 6 divided by 6 gives a remainder of 0. That's why you have here 0. Once you reach the identity element, you may stop. Please stop. Because if you keep continuing the process, you will still go back to D from the start. For example, if you have 0, 0 plus 5 will be 5 again. And it will become a new cycle. How about B? For 4, OK. 4 plus 4, that's 8. 8 divided by 6 gives a remainder of 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. Divided by 6 gives a remainder of 0. So you stop here. 4 could only generate 3 terms. 4, 2, and 0. Nothing else. If you have the element 3, 3, okay? Then 3 plus 3 gives you 6, but 6 divided by 6 gives a remainder of zero. So you stop there because you already reached the identity element of addition uh, under modulo six for this group, I mean. If you have the element two, two, two plus two, four. Four divided by six gives a remainder of four. Four plus two gives six. Six divided by six gives a remainder of zero, okay? Therefore, the correct answer, you could see that Z6, which is the list of all the remainders upon division by 6, is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Clearly, you could see all of this are, in fact, the elements of Z6. So Z6 is generated by 5 as an element. Therefore, A, 5 there, is a generator. Number 40, what is the order of five of the element five in Z15 under addition modulo 15? 
So Z15, it's all the remainders upon division by by 15, like 0, 1, 2, 3, until 14. Take note that remainders are whole numbers less than your divisor. So which of them, what's the order of 5? So like if you operate 5 to itself, addition modulo 15, how many elements can it generate in all only? Is it 3, 5, 6, or 10? We'll see. If I have 5, 5, okay, it's still 5. 5 plus 5, that's 10. 10 divided by 15, the remainder is still 10. If the number is lower than the divisor, then it is the remainder itself. 10 plus 5 is 15. But 15 divided by 15 is, is giving you a remainder of 0. If you start again, 0 plus 5, you will begin with 5. 5 plus 5 will be 10. 10 plus 5 will be 0. 0 plus 5 will be 5. So no matter how many times you repeat this process, you will only get 3 elements. It could generate only 3 elements. Hence, the order of the element 5 in Z15 under addition modulo 15 is 3, letter A. I hope you got it as well. 